Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our day number 19 and today we will do the three problems that you will see on page number 89 on the right hand column 105, 6 and 7. Problem number 105 as you can see is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problem to you then I'm going to get out of the frame. You're going to pause the video, do it yourself and then we'll compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Okay, here we go. It says that we can open an account in a bank and we're going to have an initial deposit of $800. We can start with $800 initially and then after that from, that, from then onwards, we're going to deposit $1 at the end of the first week. We're going to deposit $2 at the end of the second week. We deposit $3 at the end of the third week and so on and so forth. The question simply is, if we continue this pattern for 50 weeks, how much money will we have in the account at the end of the 50th week? Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's see what we can do, shall we? So this question essentially is this, it's a very roundabout way of asking, can you figure out what's the sum of 1 through 50? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to 50. That's what it is. That's what they're looking for. So at the end of the first week, we're going to deposit $1, then $2, then $3, and so on and so forth. At the end of the 49th week, we're going to deposit $49. At the end of the 50th week, we're going to deposit $50. If we can figure out the sum of this series, we simply have to add 800 to it, our initial deposit, and we'll have the answer. Let's do it together, shall we? Before we worry about this series, which has 50, 50 numbers in it, let's try something simpler, shall we? Let's try something simpler. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. If you have to figure out the sum of these six numbers, of course one option is to simply add them up, but that will take forever over here. Is there a quicker way? The answer is yes. If we can figure out, and they don't, what, what, we are, what I'm about to say does not, doesn't even, what I'm about to say doesn't just apply to consecutive numbers, it applies to any numbers as long as we know their average. As we know, if we have a whole bunch of numbers, and if there is a way to figure out the average, if we can figure out the average, because what is the average? Average is simply the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. Therefore, that implies that if you are interested in sum, all we have to do is take the average and multiply it by how many, here, how many we have. And that will represent the sum. There are six numbers here. Had it been only five numbers, had it been only five numbers, the average would have been right in the middle. But there are six numbers. So what do we do? There are six numbers, so what do we do? We take the average of the middle two. The average of the middle two is three and a half. And there are, so that's three and a half, and there are six of them. So the average of this six number was simply three times six is 18, and half of six is three. There we go. If you were to do it out, you will see that it's exactly 21. There is your 10, there is another 10, five and a five, and a one, 21. Same thing is going on here. Here we have 50 numbers. Here we have 50 numbers. So. The question is, which two are the middle two? The answer is 25th and a 26th. 25th and 26th because there are 24 on this side and there will be 24 on this side starting from 27 all the way to 50 because we left out 26. The average of these two, 25th and 26th, if you were to take them together and divide by two, will be 25 and a half. And since there are 50 of them, we simply have to multiply it by 50. Let's do it together, shall we? 5 times 25, 5 times 25, 5 times 25 is 125. But we're not multiplying by 5, let's, we, we, we're going to multiply by 50 because it's 0, we don't have to do it separately. If 5 times 25 is 125, 50 times 25 must be 1250. That's it. And half of 50, half of 50 is 25. It's 1275. And we had an initial deposit of 800 at the end of the period. At 
the end of the period, we'll have a grand total of $2,075. Let's do the next one, shall we? 106. 106. We are told that it's a certain state, a certain states, a certain states milk production a certain states milk production was in 2007 980 million pounds. And for those of you who do not know, the symbol for pound is LB. I have never figured out why, but that's what we use for, to represent pound, LB. We have further told that the milk production in this state in 2014 was 2.7 billion pounds. The question is approximately how many how many more millions of gallons millions of gallons were produced millions of gallons of milk was produced in 2014 compared to 2007 obviously and this is what is given to us we are told that one gallon equals 8.6 pounds this information that you see here it is given in the in the problem itself and here are the answer choices I'm going to stick them somewhere I left no room for myself I'm going to stick them somewhere so here are the answer choices 100 200 1700, 8200, and 14800. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. The first thing we need to do is convert this billion into millions. There are two things we have to convert. We have to convert this billion into millions because this is millions, this has to be millions. And eventually, once we have the millions of pounds, we have to convert the pounds into gallons because the question is how many more gallons are we producing. So let's convert billions into millions. We can do it right here actually. We can do it right here. I'm going to use just B for B, billions, so that we have room. We know that 100, or rather 1,000 million, equals 1 billion. A billion is made up of 1,000 million. 1,000 million make a billion. Just like 1,000 thousand make a million, 1,000 million make a billion. So now we, now we have the conversion, we can get rid of the billion and we are left with millions. 2.7 times 1,000, that is 2,700 million. Let's continue. So that's in 2014. In 2007, we had 980. How many more millions of gallons we produced in the two period? We're going to approximate this thing because the question did tell us approximately how many more gallons of milk are we producing, how many, how many more millions of gallons we are producing. The problem does the, use the word approximate, that's what we're going to do. Let's start waste our time with 980, we're going to pretend it's a thousand, so that gives us 1700 million. Now we have just converted 1700. Forget about the million part right now. 1700 uh, we have here. 1700 pounds. And we are told that one gallon makes 8.6 pounds. There we go. A gallon is made up of 8.6 pounds. We can knock out the pounds and we'll have our gallons. We just have to divide 1700 by 8.6. Let's do it here. 1700 by 8.6. We're going to approximate one more time. We're going to pretend that 1700 is approximately 1800. I'm going to pretend that 8.6 is 9. 
What gives us the liberty to take, what, what gives us the right to take such liberties? The answer, the answer is, again, again I'm going to repeat the question, what gives us the right, what gives us the freedom, what gives us the leeway, what gives us the latitude to take these liberties? The answer is the way the answer choice are laid out. As you can see, the answer choice are far apart. That's their way of saying that you do have some latitude, you do have some liberties, you do have some leeway when you're approximating. So that's what they're doing here. 18 is going to go into 9 two times, so the answer is 200. The answer is 200 million gallons. The answer is B. That was it. That was 106. Let's do 107. In 107 we are told that four machines can produce X units in six days. I do want to I do want to write the whole thing in one line. One more time. Four machines can produce X units in six days. Here's the question. The question is how many machines are going to be needed? How many machines are going to be needed to produce 3x units? 3 times the number of units here. Instead of x units, we are going to produce 3x units. Not only, not only we have to do 3 times the amount of work, but we have less time in only 4 days. So instead of six days, we are given only four days and we are being asked to do three times the amount of work. The question is, in order to achieve that objective, how many machines does one need? Go ahead, pause the video, do it yourself, okay? Here we go. I need to erase this thing. I could have continued here underneath it, but I'm not going to, it's too crowded. Just rewrite it. 4 produce X in 6 days. If 4 can produce X in 6 days, if you want to multiply that by 3, 12 should be able to produce 3X in 6 days. You with me so far? Let's divide, divide, let's divide this by 3. In other words, if we had... I made a huge boo boo just now. Let's slow down. So, 12 can produce 3x in 6 days. I was going to do it in 2 steps. You learn by your mistake, by doing your mistake. Never do it, no, don't, never try to be too smart, never try to be clever. Just take your time, do one step at a time. So let's slow down. So 12. So we have established that if 4 can do X in 6 days, if you had 3 times the number of machines, they should be able to do 3 times the amount of work in 6 days. Now, if you ask me to do this work, 3, 3X, three if you ask me to do the entire work, instead of 6 days, if you only give me one day, if, you, if you're being asked to do it in one day, you're going to need 6 times as many machines. 6 times as many machines can do 3X in one day. But we don't have one day, we have four days. Since we have four days, 12 times 6 over 4, we're only going to need one-fourth of the machines. Instead of one day, if, you, if we have four days, we need one-fourth the amount of machines, because we have four days. On each day we can do one quarter of the work, you get the idea. There we go, that's our answer. Four is going to go into 12 three times, there you go, that's the answer, 18. The answer is, we will need 18 machines. That was problem number 107. That was the last problem in that column, on the, on the left hand column on that page. We can do the remaining three problems, number 108, 109 and 110 on the same page tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.